Welcome to the second episode of the Infinite Becomings podcast with Lucida Collective. My name is Jane Tonra and I'll be leading our conversation today. Lucida is an artist collective of 2020 media graduates from NCAD that was born during the second lockdown back in October of 2020. We created the collective as a space to share and nurture our creative practices. This podcast accompanies our exhibition, Infinite Becomings, currently running at the NCAD Gallery from April 13th till May 11th. Joining us today are Sylvia Coiston, Katie White, Eileen Mantle, Lydia Hickey, Michaela Nash. Today we will be discussing the first issue of our zine, Layers, Layers, Layers of Infinite Becomings, that has been published alongside our current exhibition, Infinite Becomings, in NCAD Gallery. Um, so maybe we could start where, with how the zine came about. Um, well, for me, I like working with books and making books as part of my practice. So when I joined the collective and there was already an idea to kind of make a zine um, as part of just the collective and how we work, I thought it'd be really good to try and do one for this exhibition. And like this was a really good opportunity to do the first issue. Um, because it's the first time we're doing anything together that's kind of like a full project so yeah I thought it was like a really good idea to do kind of an exhibition issue of the zine to kick it off and get it like up and running Um, I think it also that kind of ties in with the um, exhibition in a certain form kind of being like a recording of our thought process and also the beginnings of us as a collective and having a zine to go along with that is a much more permanent way to um, record those things and then also to start off with issue one with the intention of going on to other issues, already starting off a, a timeline there from the beginning and a development and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think the nice thing about the zine is that it kind of run pa- runs parallel to our exhibition and it's it's like something you could pick up and you could walk around the gallery with and it could be like a guide to the work you're looking at but then at the same time when you pick it up and it's posted out to someone it it's like a small reflection of the exhibition beyond its location in the gallery I think and I think we were really lucky to have Jane's design and like photo book knowledge just to piece the whole thing together because you may because I think for me when it started out I was thinking the zine was kind of like it is still a notebook but I think that the way you've worked at Jane is it's now like it really reflects the exhibition and the concept and kind of what we're going for really well yeah I really like um trying like whenever I make a project or have a body of have a body of work when it's kind of coming to an end I like to kind of summarize it in a way that like I can keep and it makes sense for me to look back on just that small snippet of the whole body of work and be able to think about it as like the whole experience of what was happening when I was making it. So I normally do that in my practice with just with little books like photo books or just zines, chat books. It's just like an informal way that I do it in my room, like literally just print them out and staple them together. Um, and I know loads of people do that. And I really like being able to hold it in your hand as like a small thing um, and flip through it. It's just, um, yeah, it's like it's like seeing your work in a different way than you would in a space or physical space and having like a more intimate kind of moment with it and being able to like leave it down and then come back to it. It marks a moment in your practice and like a moment in your project. And that's also like a little thing in itself. that You can it's like a little tiny exhibition in a book. Yeah, exactly. And I thought that was like, it's a really good opportunity to do that when we when there's six of us working together as well, because making a book out of one person's work is like, you know, I'd probably make it like probably 12, 13 page, like not 13, probably like 12 or 16 pages, just like small little books. But then having the opportunity with six of our, six people's work to be made into like a publication. It was really cool getting to see all of our work like mesh together and work so well like as one design um and like that will happen in the space in a completely different way but when it happens like on pages together it was really nice it like reflected um reflected the way that our folders on our google drive work as like a space where we like collaborate and then putting it onto paper I just thought it was like 
a really nice thing to do. And it made yeah. it made total sense for what we're doing as well. Yeah. I think it's really special. Really, really it's a yeah, it's like a little stream of it's kinda of like a stream of consciousness the way that you've put it together actually. How did you how when you were making it, how were you matching people's because the way it works, it's not like chapter by chapter, like each person's a separate thing. You've kind of interwoven everyone's work so they play off of each other. And it's like similar to the way that we'll install it, but in its own like individual form, I think. Yeah, well, when we started making it, um, I was just going to put it together originally and everyone have like they make I uh, pages, like idea pages so that like everyone put into another folder on our Google Drive, <laughs> like a brainstorm folder so that it was like all of our images came together in one folder. And then we all took those and made like connections and mind maps. And then from the mind maps, we did, we moved on to the zine ideas then and tried to like place images that like complemented each other in terms of like color palette and um, the light in the photos, the kind of the shapes going on the comp the composition um and then placing them beside each other in these like big brainstorms so it was like a more refined brainstorm of like what parts of our work complemented each other visually and then um we moved on then to making those into spreads and like each of us uploading these spreads and idea pages like of text that we could add to these pages and excerpts from our notebooks and scans and different layers for each page and then when everybody had all of those uploaded I kind of like went through them and then made my own brainstorms from those and then kind of just played around on InDesign the way I normally do in my for my own work just trying to like place where everything goes but I did try and keep in mind that it wasn't supposed to be like a like a catalogue it was supposed to be more like a, like if we were to make a notebook all together um, and like what that would look like and reflect like kind of reflect how it's going to look in the space with all of our stuff working together but then have that in a, in a more notebook kind of a way um, yeah and still have like our individual elements to show like what we actually are working and what the work is about it's not about the individual work just existing on its own in this context it's about it like coming together and like being something else so yeah, that was kind of the main thought process behind <laughs> constructing it. Because I definitely did. I wouldn't say I like made it because I didn't like everybody made it all together. Um, but I think I kind of like glued it together in a way. Yeah. 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 yeah you directed it. Yeah. Um, I noticed um, at the start when we were kind of um, putting the images together for the zine, there was always just some sort of connection between everyone's work, I felt, um, either aesthetically or conceptually the light, the colour, the theme even, there was always just something small if you look closely between everyone's um, images. I think it's kind of funny as well that we've, I think we've gotten to a stage where yes, we've done all those processes where what the first thing we did was start off with brainstorms because we wanted to know like, what are the links between our works and what do other people think my work links to, to the group and I think we've gotten to a point where as a group, we've kind of decided which works belong together and next to each other. We haven't installed yet 100%, but I think we already in our minds have gotten to a point where there is a decision of these works are supposed to gravitate towards each other in terms of being beside each other on a page or being linked to each other by a certain piece of text. For some reason, when we see our artworks now, I think that we also see the other person's artwork that belongs beside it. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's how my brain is working now, is that I know that whatever this picture is that I have, I know which one of Sylvia's w goes with that. And I know conceptually how it links back to the light in one of Jane's ones. I know which pictures belong together out of our group. And I think we all kind of know like which ones are going to gravitate to each other just because of those processes, just because we've seen them repeatedly be put beside each other and we've gotten used to it. Yeah, I think they've the images have kind of grown together in a way. Um, mm -hmm. They've kind of, yeah, in some ways they've started interacting with each other 
in our heads anyway and now it's going to physically manifest in the exhibition I think it's going to be really amazing to see when because a lot of the work that we have now we've kind of brought with us and a lot of the ideas into the collective but now that we are a collective as we continue working I wonder how that's going to affect our new projects that we start from like if we started new projects now at this point and we had test images and then we got responses from other people and we saw what they were working on how would it affect the development and if it, the image was just in its development stage and I found a link with it to something of Sylvia's, would they interact and would they affect each other and would they actually end up as something completely different than they would be if we didn't have that connection? Yeah, I think that's going to be really interesting because um, I think a lot of the images in this exhibition are kind of starting points or kind of the middle grounds of works like they're not finished works individually mm -hmm. so I think it will be really interesting to see how they kind of grow out of this exhibition afterwards. I think um, also when thinking about the zine um, like a lot of our decisions about it like it began at the start of the collective even before the open call for the exhibition and now seeing the amount of stages it's gone through and like the exhibition like coming into that it's definitely changed it a lot so um Jane do you want to talk a bit about like the arc of where it is now and how we're thinking of displaying them and things I think that'd be interesting yeah, the like the process of it where it began, where where the like design and like how it was gonna look and what it was kind of meant to do, it's all changed since the beginning and since the like context of it going alongside the exhibition. Um I remember when we were doing the open call and we were like preparing for it, we were like, and we're doing the zine. Even if we don't get it, we still need to think about doing the zine because that's the next step. And it was kind of like a it was something to look forward to doing, even if we didn't succeed with the open call. So it was it was always going to happen regardless of the exhibition. So I think that's that's like nice where it began there as something we wanted to do anyway. Um, but yeah, it kind of began like we were like, is it going to be like a brochure that goes along with it? Is it going to explain like each of our artist statements with everything is it going to be like that or is it purely going to be like a notebook and like have just like the collective kind of stream of thought like throughout a notebook kind of a thing but as like a, a little zine um so originally more like a refined brainstorm um and then I don't know it, the way I have been making photo books and stuff has grown through the experience of constructing the scene the process of it becoming like from like more like a visual brainstorm to like an actual like publication that makes sense <laughs> in terms of like it being like a notebook but still also being legible like making sense and like like its own thing as well as like um to go alongside the exhibition um I feel like in my head it's kind of grown up it's it was like a little child and it went through its teenage phase like it's it's blue phase and now it's kind of coming to resolve it's actually because also it's taken like it's been in the work for months so yeah it's really nice to see it kind of come together now yeah the way that it's existing now where it's nearly finished and like actually ready to go and be printed is really exciting to see because um, the way I've been working on it has been taking the first version where it was just like the works that look nice together and make sense together existing together like in a visually pleasing way in a book that's what it looked like first on white pages the work existing nicely as it would kind of like if you were installing it in a room I suppose but in a book and then having like excerpts of text and just like little bits of poems and scrawls throughout it and then seeing that printed for the first time going hmm this maybe isn't exactly what we were trying to do and why what do we need to change and like why is it not like doing what we wanted it to do and then go just going completely just like make it all blue like that's that was just my response I was like do everything in blue just the whole thing it's fine it'll make it more of a thing <laughs> so I just changed everything to like blue 
and the images were blue, the paper was blue, the text was blue, and I don't know really <laughs> why. <laughs> and then we had another meeting about it, and I was like really excited to show you guys this blue zine, and everyone was like liking the blue. But then I remember Katie just being like, but well, like, why is it all blue now? And I was like, that <laughs> is a good question that I do not have an answer to, actually. So maybe we should think about that. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it almost like the making of the zine is kind of like speaks to the struggles of being like an online collective. It's like mm. we can't. It's almost as like someone has to like work on it. And we're all kind of a bit like, I guess, removed a little bit from the process but you know having like the talks and bringing it back is really good and I guess it's we had to like think at multiple stages back to like what is its purpose and is it going to work like alongside the exhibition and be cohesive and I think it's come together like really nicely yeah and there's still now now that ended inversion that I've gone I like pulled the reins back a bit on the blue <laughs> But that, like, there's still that element of blue in the background because we were talking about the blue and, like, it is kind of an overarching colour throughout, like, all of our work. We do, like, a lot of us have a lot of blue in our work um, and there's going to be blue elements in the exhibition space and, um, yeah, just the blue made sense in a, but, like, not in a way to make everything blue. So now in the zine, there is, like, that blue in the background and it is, like, it does tie everything together but it's not like just thrown on top of everything. Um, so that's, I think that's really nice the way it like, it went through the stage of just being everything blue and then just like calmed down again and is like making sense now. Um, but definitely the thing about like being online, like we can, we're not all in studio together every day or like once a week or whatever in person. So it's not like I can just rock up on a Monday and be like, oh my God, I changed everything to blue. What do you think? It was like, I worked on it for like a week in blue and then, I was like, oh, this actually doesn't make sense. And it took like me waiting to like go on the call and show you to like actually understand <laughs> what I was doing myself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think we, it, it does. It does. The jumps in like the difference in each like stage of it really does kind of show. I remember being uh, in on that meeting for the first like half of it and then having to leave and everything was blue when I was in the meeting. And then I left and you guys chatted again for another 20 minutes, half an hour. And then I get a text saying, okay, it's not blue anymore. <laughs> I was like, fine. Yeah, okay. I trust you guys. But it is, it's just part of the process. Yeah. I suppose it shows how much communication, how much slower talking over text is as well versus like sitting down and having a conversation with someone. Yeah, the communication is such a barrier for, like, mm. the, um, just, I guess, just exhibition making in general. It's, like, really hard when you're online and trying to organise all this stuff. Like, it's possible. It's just, it takes a good bit longer, mm, yeah. <laughs> I think, definitely. You just, you have to work on these, like, parallels from each other. You know, you kind of only meet during these meetings and then you have to try and make sure you're doing the right thing and you never 100% know what everyone else is doing or how it's all going to come together at the next meeting so right we're i we're always trying to like we're working towards a physical thing but we're always in a kind of digital space working together in a digital space so it's there's kind of a a gap between those two yeah especially for like a book as well because even like when you're working on a book on a computer it's completely different when you print it and then you see it in your hand and you're going oh <laughs> wait a second I need to change this and I need to change this and it's not something you can do until you print it and see it printed so that yeah. kind of is like a nice metaphor for like I don't know a digital collective doing a physical show because we've we're like thinking oh this is the plan this is the vision this is what's going to happen and then we get into the space and we see everything physically and we're like oh hang on we have to change things <laughs> yeah. but this is the thing as well about um not just the exhibition but mainly the zine is that one of the things that it achieved for us was to be able to reach people physically um yeah. and uh you know cross further than just that 5k around 
the gallery, which is that's there is a limit of that circle around the gallery of people who can go in there or can walk by and see the exhibition. Um, so that was fulfilling that purpose for us as well, the zine and all the elements to it as well to try and create something immersive for people and just to allow them to actually have a moment that they can commit to the artwork and sit down with it. Um, and I think also um, what it was achieving for us as well was to try and give more of that insight into into the work and the thought process and the concepts. It's a very text-heavy kind of exhibition, um, but we didn't want it to be an exhibition that people read as much as they saw it as one large connecting shape that it kind of becomes, you know, a pattern, like a, like a mind map, and that you wouldn't necessarily have to read every single little word, but that you would pick up on the connections. And I think for us, like, the zine was supposed to be there as well to help people if they wanted to delve a little bit, bit deeper and to actually be able to, to read some written parts and read some handwriting, but then for the exhibition itself not to... I don't know, because the exhibition at the same time, we always had that goal that it was almost like a, no a notebook, an exhibition as a notebook. Um, but you can't have a notebook at the back of a room behind a window yeah. and have people be able to read every single part that we wanted to get across to them. So the zine is, is great in that it kind of stands on its own, but it's able to enrich the exhibition, which also stands on its own. Yeah. Yeah, they're both connected threads, I think. And I think th one of the main issues we ran into was that um, no one can actually enter the space at the moment. So it is very much just like a, kind of like a a box, like a viewing box. And that really limits how many people can see our show. So I think that for us, one of the, our accessibility was a very big thing for us. So I think that... Um, it allowed us to extend our reach far beyond Dublin, and I think that's helped a lot in yeah. terms of our process. I think it reflects us as a collective as well, because I know a lot of us are based in Dublin now, but we were scattered all over the country beforehand. Um, and, you know, having something that can be reached beyond a certain location, I think, was really important for us. Yeah, and the fact, I think, as well, that it's, uh, a physical kind of thing rather than like we have our website as well and we we have the podcast but I think um, it was really important for us to have a physical um, thing that people could interact with and have a more kind of intimate experience. I think the fact as well that the zine is interactive is something special because I know we're trying to bring the physical exhibition to the viewer as much as we can and I feel like the zine allows, and it's another aspect that kind of allows the viewers to connect with the work in some sort of way. And we did make it as personal, really, as possible, but also as enjoyable as possible, and um, try to get make it immersive as well with the augmented reality um, portion of it. And then that sort of, I suppose, brings it back to the digital as well, which of course we're all lens-based artists, so we we kind of have to try and embrace both at the same time and the zine really does that it it has that extra something digital to it um and it's kind of it's kind of like sort of a, a magical pop-up book of our thoughts once you bring your phone to it um and then also the augmented reality was hopefully supposed to just bring things to life for people and maybe bring them a little bit closer to having an exhibition experience. Even as um, Anne from the gallery had said before, she said, did you ever think that maybe people are going to use the zine and like hang it up on their walls and then look at the filters regularly, you know, keep the zine around so that they can keep their phone up to it and, and bring it to life whenever they feel like it. Um, so it's an interesting thing to think about, you know, once people receive the zine, as long as they have Instagram and their phone, they will have this interactive little poster or artwork 
they could hang it up and make it an exhibition in their own home if they wanted to. Yeah, that's so interesting. I never, th- I, I, I'd never even thought of that. I suppose that kind of dismantles what we see, like what's the purpose of books and like how do we use these objects that are so common in our day to day lives and then kind of turn them into something else. I think that really interestingly relates to what we were talking about in the post project actually, where after we receive these tangible objects that we are using to create connections with each other and using to create like different streams of thoughts with each other, we were going to like install them as a little exhibition from the different um, objects that we'd created or collected through post. So do you want to describe the post project a bit more? Yeah, so the post project kind of started out of the desire to want to kind of collaboratively make things together. Um, and to physically make things rather than just having conversations over Zoom. Um, So we started out with a random word from a dictionary and we'd each create a response to that and post it to each other. And then you would then create something in response to whatever you receive. So there's a kind of a continuous chain of responses. Um, And so what Michaela was mentioning there was that at the end, once we kind of got through each person, um, each individual would have like a package with all our responses and we would curate them in our own spaces and document that. So it would become a kind of um, mobile exhibition of sorts. Yeah, all I can picture now is somebody like taking our zine apart and just sticking it up. I think that's really oh, I'd cool. Love that. I'd love to see that. Wouldn't it be beautiful? Yeah. Yeah. And oh, just, be so cool. you know, maybe making their own exhibition, but also the thought of someone liking one of the AOR filters so much that they could sort of have it in their space and trigger it whenever they feel like it with their phone. Yeah. Do you want to um, describe the AOR filters that go along with the zine yeah. and the exhibition just a little bit more? So um, they are image triggered augmented reality filters um so they go along with our instagram and we've also made some for the artivive app um and the way they work is that each specific image um from the exhibition that is printed in the zine but also hung up in the exhibition um is it is linked to a filter so it will trigger through your phone um a response of a digital filter kind of like the ones that you would use on Instagram on your face like you might have floating words around your face that sort of thing and it essentially brings the images to life but you can do it with the zine to a point where it sort of looks like um, a pop-up book where a sort of digital image will show up and it'll also play as an animation slash video slash gif sort of thing Um, and you can either do that with your zine or you can also do it standing outside the window. Um, so you only need to either download that app or have Instagram and go to Lucida Collective Instagram and you'll find those filters on there. Um, and for us, the aim was that it fit with our concept so much because you were able to add information to the images. A lot of the filters would have sound, like one of us reciting a poem or it would have writing, um, or it would have movements that sort of brought the image to life, and it meant that we could add a layer of ideas to each of the images. And um, it also meant that we could create something that people could do at home, because obviously during the pandemic we want to keep people at home as much as possible, and we didn't want to have it that people could only experience what we were offering if they left their houses and and walked past Thomas Street. Um, So uh, essentially why we're so excited right now talking about the thought of someone hanging up a page of the zine is that we can just picture this sort of the 3D digital element that each of the pictures have and that someone could actually kind of incorporate that into their space and into their home Um, and also there are some filters that we've been working on where you can kind of feel like you're placing the exhibition in front of you um, in the room in your own home we were really trying to see if we could sort of make people feel like that's what they were doing they were they were placing 
uh, an element of the exhibition into their space and they were actually committing to sort of a process of going and finding it and then experiencing it happening because it is an experience as well to just kind of see your phone trigger to the image and suddenly getting that that little video or that little sort of pop-up the way it appears yeah I think it's going to be really interesting for us to kind of reflect back on the exhibition afterwards and have a look at the kind of the digital and the physical elements and how they kind of interact with each other or how people engage with either of like both of those aspects um especially because i guess that's kind of the reality of uh our day-to-day -day existence is very digital and physical kind of yeah there's like a duality yeah i think the nice thing about the zine is it exists in between the two of them uh, like the the exhibition does as well but because the zine is so mobile it can kind of exist between the digital and the physical a lot e more easy than more easily than the exhibition would or and then our website is so digital but at the same time it's really embedded in our like physical process of making the exhibition and making the zine and all of our different kind of uh processes of becoming i guess yeah that one place i think having the physical the physical zine at the moment is like really it's it's really important not only just for access but just um for for us working as artists to, to make something tangible and like physical in your hand um at a time when even the physical show you're putting on is going to be seen from behind a window um and it's not going to be like people aren't going to be able to walk up to each work and like have that kind of gallery experience with your work um so completely just changing how you think about the gallery experience and viewing a show um and have being able to have like a book in your hand of something that's happening somewhere else um and then also having that layer of the AOR on top of that as well um i just think it's really it's really cool and like especially in the context of being all of us being at home and like experiencing these very distinct layers of like the physical and the digital um yeah and having our work like kind of move through those layers of like physical digital and a mix of the two i think it's really nice yeah i definitely find found the zine like really comforting as a space to kind of be um thinking about having something tactile and also the postcards that are going inside of it is kind of a throwback to the post project and a continuation on of that um i don't know sylvia if you want to talk about the postcards yeah, so we've included postcards in the zines and each of them have a, a word or a prompt word with their definition. And we're inviting members of the public to engage with these postcards and create either a visual or a text response to the word onto the postcard itself. And then you send it on to a family or a friend and they'll create a response to what you've created onto the same postcard. So again, it becomes a chain of responses and you can send it to three to five people, as many as you like. And yeah, we'd encourage you to share your responses with us. Yeah, if they email us their responses, we can put it up in a section on our website and our Instagram. Exactly. Or if people tag a picture with Infinite Becomings and they post it on Instagram, we can add it as well. Yeah. It's important for us that... Um, the way that these postcards are supposed to pass between, you know, many hands, that it's another extension of infinite becomings as the word uh, is defined, that we want something to arrive with someone and for them to experience it and, and sort of understand it. And it kind of, through the process of them working on it, and then completing it and sending it and then it arriving with a second person and then it going through the same process again is infinitely becoming and uh, really, really for us tied back to the whole concept of the zine and the show. And obviously as well, just trying to tie in as many physical elements as we can and as much interaction from people as we can, because 
as a collective we we work um collaboratively and we want to really push that feeling of uh, many people taking part because it's very important to us for our art practice and also we just see huge value in it yeah the the first page of the zine actually spoiler alert um <laughs> has <laughs> it says uh, the first page is mapped by many and the mind's hands eyes so i think that kind of sums up what you were saying there eileen that we really are like we really want to I don't know, talk about the collaborative aspect of like everything that we're doing and collaborative work. And I think it's so valuable, at, like, again, especially in the context of being at home alone at the moment. Yeah, it's been so useful to us. So it's kind of nice to try and like push it forward and yeah. make sure because it's, yeah, you don't realize how nice it is until you get to like engage creatively like in a tactile way and then sort of see it go on it's so much fun to receive something in the post yeah it's very enjoyable mm. it's really precious i think especially during covid when we're so isolated having something like that tangible that you can touch and you know that someone's put care and love and you know attention into this thing and then continuing on that process and sending it on to someone else i think is it's a way of reaching out to people it's a very kind of human thing as well that you kind of receive, you know, you receive the postcard and it has someone else's handwriting on it. Um, and then it has these items inside of it and some of them are packaged or sometimes, you know, all of the items are handmade as well. So it really gives you that sort of sense of someone else's like, you know, fingerprints still being on this, this object. I think like that is reflected really well in the zine as well, the way that we've put it together, because each page has a little bit of someone on it. So whether it be like some of their work or their words or like their handwriting or like a scan of paper that they have actually touched and like that being part of every page of the zine, um, it kind of it just really makes sense with the post project and with how we work as a collective so I think it's it's come together really nicely and I think it will really provide that like tangible material element of like the exhibition that might be missing otherwise. We've sort of just been leaving our our traces on everything, on all of these little pieces of paper. They're all just traces, um, all the handwritten notes and that sort of thing that are incorporated. Obviously the work itself, it could kind of be seen as the same thing because it's sort of a trace of an idea because all of it is photography that's in the zine but it it all comes back to just sort of trying to capture something in in the moment i think there's a real sense of presence though you like there might not be a physical body there but there's a presence of someone there or someone has been there and then we're continuing that and communicating through that and i think that's yeah yeah i mean one of the main ideas of um of photography as well is to sort of leave your trace of how you are are seeing this situation and and how you are processing it so all of our photography reflects that it reflects our point of view and then all of our writing has the same sort of sort of trace of each individual yeah and i think it's mm -hmm. really interesting to think that someone might be listening to this and have it in front of them in the future <laughs> so if you have it oh my God. so if you have it have a look through that's cool to think yeah and do the aor it's worth it yeah. yeah go on instagram yeah if you are listening now and you don't have a zine we'll have information on where you can get one down below so that you yeah. can have a look <laughs> The easiest way to find anything from us is to just to go to our Instagram, which is just at Lucida Collective. We have links in the bio and everything, everything is linked there. And it's just kind of the easiest point of access for everything. And you can always contact us through the Instagram. Yeah. And we have our email. We have our email on the Instagram as well. We have our website linked on the Instagram. So, yeah, even if you don't have Instagram, we can still go to our Instagram and access everything through there. I think it's a good like concise access point where we can link everything else from there yeah sure. get in touch we want to send you the zine and for you to experience all the stuff yeah one thing i wanted to say was was that 
I love that every time we have a conversation just about what we do we're doing, we either we're like fleshing out our processes or we're like discovering something else because last week when I was fixing up our press release after our com I'm glad we did it after we did that previous podcast because there was all these like different layers of how far we'd come and then comparing that to the original um statements and like everything that we'd written for the application it was so different to what um the new press release had come had turned into yeah and I totally agree that like when I went back to edit the zine after the last conversation that we had the very long conversation <laughs> where we talked about so much and like we only had one topic that we were supposed to cover but we really just covered like a lot and then when when after thinking about that and then going back to the zine I felt better about the direction it was going in because I had like reflected on the direction it came in if you know what I yeah. mean yeah yeah for sure that's exactly what that felt like fixing uh, like changing our statement last week it was more confident in knowing I felt like I knew because it was like oh yeah no that is all something that I was thinking but we talked about it and now it's like real <laughs> in my mind I like know it for sure that this is like the direction it's going in Completely. Yeah. it's funny that that is a part of the process is forgetting where you started and yeah. then remembering where you started can make everything so much more solid for you but if you get caught up in something small and then you forget what the bigger picture was and what your initial intentions were and why you changed things mm -hmm. if you just keep those in mind you can find a lot more stability versus just sort of going off and thinking you're going towards the end goal and then not realizing what is the end goal yeah I think anyway. that's that's a huge part of just the creative process in every aspect. I think anyone who works in like creatively at all, that's just part of it's part of it. <laughs> just like starting somewhere and then going on this big winding road and then like having to go right back to the start to like get to the end again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I just wanted to add that um we are probably going to have displayed different versions of the zine and how they progressed in the exhibition in a vitrine somewhere in there. So it will probably be documented somehow. I'm not sure how accessible it will be to people outside of the window, but we also don't know what the COVID restrictions are going to be when like we're doing the exhibition, mm -hmm. like who knows, but it'll definitely be documented somewhere. And if not on our Instagram or on the website, um, or maybe on the MCAD channels, um, who knows, but we'll definitely have bits of the progress of it up, just if anyone's interested in seeing that mm -hmm. side of it. We might not be able to let people into the gallery now to have a look at that progress, but in the next version of this exhibition, hopefully, fingers crossed, restrictions will have gone down and people will actually be able to come into the new space wherever that is and be able to like see the process in person themselves with the zine though because it's not just for this exhibition like it's a plan we have a plan to continue like a series of zines as a collective and this is just the first issue that is based around it kind of goes in tandem with the exhibition that we're doing um but the the idea of the zine is like it's called layers 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 and then like this one is layers 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 of infinite becomings so it'll be interesting to start the next issue and like see how this one grew and then starting from scratch again for something new like i think that's going to be really exciting and i wonder what that'll look like yeah. yeah but also like our working process as well is sort of it's never really going to start from scratch. Yeah, true. We're always carrying things over. So I, I think, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what stuff endures through multiple sort of uh, iterations of the zine and whether there's one thing that we started off with that follows us as a concept that really works with us that we end up, it end up, ends up enduring through multiple multiple versions of the zine and still being a very strong idea or concept for us. And that might extend to the new exhibitions as well. Like every time we have an installation, that will probably show up as a process as well. Yeah, because we definitely want to have uh, these exhibitions and these zines as new layers to the old exhibition and to always carry on 
um, a certain amount of the old exhibition so that you can see that development um, and so that we can acknowledge that development and have um, preserved the original origins of the work and um, have seen where it came from and where it has gone. Um, so that's going to happen hopefully for both scene both and exhibitions and hopefully every single exhibition will always have a zine that accompanies it. Thanks for listening in today. We hope you enjoyed the second episode of the Infinite Becomings podcast series. Our exhibition Infinite Becomings is visible through the NCAD gallery window until the 11th of May. It also exists as a digital archive on our website infinitebecomings.com. To get yourself a copy of our zine that we discussed in this episode, go to lucidacollective.bigcartel.com. To keep up to date with us, follow our Instagram account, at lucidacollective. Any of the links I've mentioned will be in the description below, as well as in our Instagram bio. Thanks again for listening. We hope you join us for the next episode coming out on Friday the 30th of April.